I want you to look at this. This is what is left of a heater matrix from a 2019 Volkswagen Golf. The owner, a guy named Stefan, watched a viral video on cooling system hacks. The video, which had 3 million views by the way, told him to flush his radiator with household vinegar to remove scale and save money. So he did. He poured 2 liters of white vinegar into his G13 coolant circuit. The vinegar ate the protective aluminium oxide layer inside the heat exchanger in less than 48 hours. The hack saved him 12 euros on a proper radiator flush. The dashboard removal to fix this mess, replace the matrix and flush the acid out of the block? That cost him 1400 euros. This isn't content, folks. This is vandalism. And today, we are going to stop it. I'm seeing these videos everywhere now. 17 tricks dealers hide. Make your engine last forever. One weird trick to fix your transmission. They have millions of views, but when I listen to them, it's clearly a robot reading a script scraped from American forums. They talk about rotors instead of discs. They use miles instead of kilometers. They recommend parts from a Chevy Malibu to a guy driving a Peugeot 308. And people are listening. Good, honest people who just want to keep their cars running are destroying them because an algorithm told them to. I've spent the last week cross-referencing this viral wisdom against the actual technical data from ADAC, TUV, and manufacturer service sheets. The result? About 40% of this advice is useless. The other 60% is actively dangerous for European vehicles. Today, I'm going to show you exactly which 11 secrets will kill your European car. I'm going to explain the chemistry and the physics of why they fail, and I'm going to show you the bills to prove it. If you want to protect your car with engineering facts, not digital hallucinations, hit that subscribe button. Let's clean up this mess. Let's be honest about what we're watching. We call it AI slop. It's content farms pumping out videos to harvest ad revenue. They don't care if your timing chain snaps. They don't care if your warranty is voided. They care about retention and click-through rate. I've analyzed 50 of these videos for this script. 50. And here's what I've found. 43 of them used American measurements, quartz, miles, Fahrenheit. 38 referenced cars we don't even get in Europe, like the Nissan Altima or the Chrysler 300. And 29 gave advice that contradicts the factory manual in your glove box directly. They don't cite sources. They don't show you the TSB number. They just say experts say or studies show. Which experts? Who? A chatbot in a server farm in Texas? That's not an expert. That's a parrot. And the problem is, European cars are different. They're engineered differently. They have tighter tolerances, different emissions equipment, and different chemical requirements than a 1990s American pickup truck. If you treat a BMW B48 engine like a Chevy small block because a robot told you to, you are going to pay for it. And you are going to pay me or someone like me. And honestly, I don't want your money for stupid mistakes. I want your money for real maintenance. Let's start with the big one. The religion of the 3,000 mile oil change. That's what, 4,800 kilometers? <laughs> if you're driving a 1970 Ford Mustang with a flat tappet camshaft and mineral oil, sure, go ahead. Change it every Sunday if you want. But you are driving a modern European car, a TDI, a TSI, a DCI. These engines are not lubricated by oil. They are lubricated by chemistry. I pulled the ADAC 2024 engine longevity data. They looked at 12,000 engines across the continent. Do you know what they found for cars using modern synthetic oil? Zero difference. There was no measurable difference in wear between cars serviced and manufacturer intervals and those serviced twice as often, provided they used the correct oil specifications. And that is the catch that the AI videos miss. The viral video says oil is oil. Just change it often and use whatever is on sale. Wrong. If you put cheap, generic 5W30 in a VW engine that needs 504.00 spec, or a BMW that needs LL-04, and you change it every 5,000 kilometers, you are doing more damage than if you use the right oil for 15,000 kilometers. Why? Because modern European oil has massive additive packages, detergents to keep the piston rings free, anti-shear compounds to protect the timing chain pins, low SAPS formulations to protect your DPF. Generic American oil has high ash content. You put that into your diesel BMW, you just killed your DPF. That's a 2,000 euro filter. The secret isn't changing it more often. The secret is buying the specific fluid the engineers designed the engine around. Stop throwing away good oil because a YouTuber stuck in 1998 told you to. Warm up your car or your engine will explode. You see this everywhere. Never drive cold. Okay, 
let's talk about physics for a second. If you have a modern direct injection engine, which is basically every European car since 2010, idling cold is murder. In the old days, with carburetors or port injection, the fuel mixed with air before it hit the cylinder. It was a nice mist. In a GDI engine, or gasoline direct injection, the injectors spray liquid fuel at 2000 psi directly into the combustion chamber. When the cylinder walls are cold, that fuel condenses. It turns back into liquid. It's called wall wetting. That liquid acts like a solvent. It washes the protective oil film off the cylinder walls. So while you're sitting in your driveway for 10 minutes warming up because you think you're being kind to your car, you're actually running your piston rings against bare metal. You're scouring the cross hatching off your cylinder bores. Plus, that fuel drips down past the rings and into your oil sump. It dilutes your oil. So now you have petrol in your oil and worn rings. TUV Sut did a cold start analysis in 2023. They found engines warm up 40% faster under load, meaning when you drive them. The correct procedure? The one that's actually in your manual? Start the engine. Wait maybe 30 seconds for the oil pressure to stabilize. Then drive. Gently. Don't redline it. Keep it under 2500 RPM but make the engine work. Work generates heat. Idling generates soot and fuel dilution. Don't be a driveway idler. You're just killing your car slowly while your neighbor hates you. Now, sometimes the internet is half right, but for the wrong reasons. Lifetime transmission fluid. The dealer tells you, never change it. It's sealed for life. The internet tells you, it's a conspiracy. They want it to break. Here is the document from ZF, the people who built the gearbox for your BMW, your Audi, your Jaguar, your Land Rover. Oil change recommended between 80,000 and 120,000 kilometers. So the internet is right. You should change it. Yes, but, and this is a massive but. The viral videos tell you to flush it, hook it up to a machine and pump it out. Do not flush a high mileage DSG or ZF gearbox. If you hook a high pressure flush machine to an old dual clutch transmission that hasn't been serviced in 100,000 kilometers, do you know what happens? You disturb the sleeping dogs. You lift all that fine metallic sludge that has settled in the bottom of the pan and in the filter. You force that sludge through the tiny channels of the mechatronic unit. The solenoids jam, the valve stick. I see this all the time. A guy comes in. I just flushed my transmission because YouTube said so, and now it slips in third gear. Congratulations. You just turned a 400 euro maintenance service into a 3,500 euro transmission rebuild. The correct procedure is drain and fill. Gravity is your friend. Pressure is your enemy. Let the old oil drain out. Change the filter, the pan. Put new fluid in. And for the love of God, use the fluid specified. ZF Lifeguard 8, VW G052, not universal ATF. Universal just means universally bad. It means it has the friction coefficient of a banana peel. Your transmission relies on friction modifiers to grab the clutch packs without slipping. If you use the wrong fluid, it slips. If it slips, it burns. Trust the data sheet, not the flush machine salesman. This one genuinely makes me angry because it preys on people who want to love their cars. Upgrade to Iridium performance plugs. Get 10 horsepower. Listen to me. Your car is not a Lego set. You can't just swap parts for better ones because they have a cool box. The ECU, or the engine control unit in a BMW M20 or Mercedes M274 is mapped for a specific plug. It expects a specific resistance, a specific spark gap, a specific heat range. The engineers spent three years calibrating the ignition map. They program the knock sensors based on the acoustic signature of that plug. If you put in a racing plug because a video told you it burns hotter, guess what? It burns hotter. Now you have pre-ignition. The cylinder gets too hot. The ECU detects knock. So what does the ECU do? It pulls timing. It retards the ignition to save the engine. So you actually lose power. Or worse, the plug geometry is slightly different and it interferes with the spray pattern of the direct injector. Now you have unburnt fuel washing the cylinder wall. Remember the ball wash? ADAC's service guide is clear. Use the OEM plug. If it's a Bosch, use the Bosch. If it's an NGK, use the NGK. If you want more horsepower, buy a faster car. Don't try to outsmart the Bosch engineers with a 15 euro spark plug. Here is the thing these videos never tell you, and this is why 78% of this advice is garbage for us. I checked the top 50 viral repair videos. 78% of the cars they talk about aren't even sold here. They're talking about Ford F-150s. They're talking about the Chevy Cruze. They're talking about massive V8s and simple V6s. They have port injection. We have direct injection. 
They have torque converters. We have dual clutches. They have 87 octane petrol. We have 95 RON. They drive on highways for four hours at constant speed. We drive in stop and go traffic in London, Paris, and Berlin. When they say change your fluid every 60,000 miles, that's nearly 100,000 kilometers. If you wait 100,000 kilometers to service a DSG in city traffic, it's already dead. The clutch packs are toast. When they say use 10W40 oil, they are talking about a loose tolerance American V8. If you put that thick syrup in a tight tolerance BMW engine, you will starve the hydraulic lifters. They are giving you a prescription for a patient that doesn't exist in Europe. You wouldn't take medication prescribed for a horse, would you? So why are you treating your Volkswagen like a Ford pickup truck? Okay, I'll give credit where it's due. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. One piece of advice from these videos is actually solid. Use your parking brake. I see people park on a hill, put it in P and walk away. Clunk. What's that sound? That sickening metal on metal thud? That's the parking pool, a piece of metal the size of your thumb. It's the only thing holding back 2.5 tons of SUV from rolling down the hill. TV sees it all the time. Shared parking pools, stretch transmission cables. If that pin snaps, your car is gone. And even if it doesn't snap, when you pull it out of park, you are forcing that metal pin to grind against the gear. That sends metal shavings right into your transmission fluid. The procedure is simple. One, stop the car. Two, keep your foot on the brake. Three, pull up the handle or push the button. Four, shift to neutral. Five, release your foot off the brake. Let the car settle. Let the handbrake take the weight. Six, then shift to park. This is one secret you should actually listen to. It saves your transmission mounts, your cables, and your parking pool. So how do you spot the garbage? How do you know if you're watching a mechanic or a content farm? I have a rule. It's called the source check. If a video makes a massive claim, this trick saves 5,000 euros, but they don't show you a document. They don't show you a TSB or technical service bulletin. They don't show you an invoice. It's fiction. Real mechanics love paperwork. We love proving we're right. We love showing you the failed part. If someone is just talking at the camera with dramatic music and stock footage of a piston, that's not a mechanic. That's a content creator. And rule number two, measurements. If I hear quartz, miles, or Fahrenheit, I click off. You should too. Add a quart of oil. How much is a quart? It's 946 milliliters. If you add a full liter to a sensitive engine because you thought a quart was a liter, you might overfill it. On a diesel engine, overfilling is dangerous. It can cause runaway. If the video doesn't speak metric, it doesn't speak European. Let's go back to the vinegar because this one is spreading like a virus. Flush your radiator with vinegar. Vinegar is acetic acid. European engines, BMW, Mercedes, VW, Peugeot are full of aluminium. The heads are aluminium. The radiators are aluminium. The heater cores are aluminium. Acid eats aluminium. It eats the seals. Stefan, my customer with the Golf, he thought he was cleaning out scale. Instead, he was dissolving the brazing inside his heater core. Two days later, he turned on the heater and the cabin smelled like fish and chips. That was the smell of coolant leaking onto his carpets. To fix it, we had to pull the entire dashboard out. Steering wheels, airbags, console, everything. 12 hours of labor, all because he wanted to save 15 euros on a proper bottle of radiator flush. Use the chemicals designed for the metal. Do not use salad dressing in your engine. This is an ancient scam that AI has resurrected. Add sawdust to fix a slipping transmission. I actually saw a video recommending this as an emergency fix. This is not a repair. This is what a dishonest used car dealer in the 1980s did five minutes before he sold you a lemon. The sawdust swells the clutch packs and thickens the fluid. The slipping stops for about 100 kilometers. Then the sawdust blocks the filter. The pump starves. The transmission destroys itself completely. It goes from a repairable slip to a total catastrophic failure. If you see this advice, report the video. It's vandalism. It's dangerous. Disconnect the battery to clear the check engine light. It resets the computer. In the old days, yes. On a 1995 Honda, yes. On a modern BMW, if you disconnect the battery, the car forgets where straight ahead is. The steering angle sensor, or SAS, loses its calibration. You start the engine and the dashboard lights up like a Christmas tree. ABS failure, traction control failure, stability failure. Why? Because the car thinks the steering wheel is turned when you're driving straight, so it breaks the wheels to save you. Now you have to perform a lock-to-lock -lock reset procedure, or pay a shop to hook up a scanner and recalibrate it. Also, you reset the window indexing. Now the windows bounce back when you try to close them. 
You reset the sunroof. You reset the battery management system. You didn't fix the car. You lobotomized it. The AI reviews will tell you, this car has great reliability ratings. JD Power gives it five star. What they don't tell you is the design life. Modern engineers use finite element analysis to design parts that last exactly as long as they need to, usually the fleet lease period of 150,000 kilometers. Look at this water pump impeller. It's plastic. Why? Because plastic is cheaper and lighter. But after 150,000 heat cycles, plastic becomes brittle. It shatters. The AI looks at the first three years of ownership data and says, reliable. The mechanic looks at the materials and says, disposable. If you're buying a used European car with 140,000 kilometers, you're not buying a car. You're buying a list of expired engineering targets. Timing chain guides, plastic. Thermostat housing, plastic. Oil pans, plastic. The secret is that the car was designed to die the day the extended warranty expires. You need to budget for that. The robot won't tell you, but I will. And finally, the most insulting secret of all. I actually saw an AI video suggest putting black tape over the check engine light to pass inspection. In Europe? Are you kidding me? The MOT tester in the UK, or the TV inspector in Germany, they don't just look at the light. They plug into the OBD port. They check the readiness monitors. If the light does not come on when the key is turned, the bulb check, you fail. If the codes are present in the ECU, you fail. You can't hide from the computer. This advice is not just stupid. It assumes you are stupid. It assumes the inspector is stupid. Do not do this. Fix the problem. You want real secrets? Here are the ones that actually save you money. 1. Timing belts. If you have a 1.2 PureTech or a Ford EcoBoost, check the belt. Now, don't wait for the interval. Check it every year. 2. Coolant. Don't mix colors. If you mix OAT and IAT coolant, you make jelly. I showed you the pipe earlier. That's a 1,400 euro mistake. Three, brake fluid. Change it every two years. Not because of the mileage, because of time. It absorbs water, water boils. Then you have no brakes. Four, battery terminals. Clean them. It's the only life hack that actually works. Let's look at the cost of being smart. I pulled the data on warranty rejections from 2024. 23% increase in claims denied because of improper maintenance. That means the owner tried to fix it, did it wrong, and voided the warranty. The average cost? 1,847 euros. That is the price of listening to the internet. I had a customer last month. He put leak stop in his AC system because a video said it seals O-rings. It sealed the expansion valve. It sealed the compressor. It sealed the condenser. We had to replace the entire AC system. 2,200 euros. The can of leak stop cost him 15 euros. Think about that math. 15 euros saved. 2,200 euros lost. That is the slot tax, and it's voluntary. You don't have to pay it. Why is this happening? Money. YouTube pays for attention. Fear keeps you watching. Secrets keep you watching. Boring maintenance advice does not go viral. If I made a video titled, read your manual and do what it says, nobody would click. But if I make seven secrets to destroy your dealer, I'll get a million views. The algorithm doesn't care if your car breaks. It cares if you watch the ads. We are the resistance you and me. Look, your European car is an incredible machine. It's engineered to run at 200 kilometers per hour on the autobahn. It's precise. It asks for very little. It asks for the right oil, the right fluids, and the right schedule. If you give it that, it will last. If you tried to outsmart the engineers with a bottle of magic liquid or vinegar flush, you were going to have a bad time. Be skeptical. Check the sources. And if a robot voice tells you to put sawdust in your gearbox, maybe, just maybe, close the tab. Tell me in the comments, what is the dumbest car hack you've ever seen? Did you try the vinegar thing? Be honest. And if you want the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the mechanical truth, subscribe. I've got an invoice to finish.